Here now, Senator Lindsey Graham, member of the Judiciary Committee. All right, Senator, can you call hey. the White House and maybe get him a message <laughs> about some of these things I'm advising him to do? I don't think anybody's at home. <laughs> uh, so here's the deal. It's one thing to hurt Putin, and shutting down Nord Stream 2 hurts Putin. It's a cash cow. It's a pipeline that goes into Germany from Russia, goes around Ukraine, and it's a lot of money for Putin and a lot of gas for the Germans. I'm glad they're shutting the damn thing down, but it doesn't help you here at home. You want to help the American people? Let's become energy independent again. Why can't we open up Keystone Pipeline? Let's have a vote in the United States Senate and put Democrats on record who want to keep the pipeline shut down. Why can't we go back to aggressive fracking? and unfreeze, what you just said, limitations on exploring for oil and, oil and gas here at home. We are sitting on an abundance of American-owned oil and gas, and we should be exploiting it for our purposes and helping our allies. We should be all in with energy independence. But no, we're getting our ass kicked overseas, and Biden's getting led around by his nose here at home by the left. We're not going to secure our border because he'd piss off AOC. We're not going to drill for oil and gas that we own because the environmental left owns the guy, and Putin is kicking his ass in the Ukraine. And I will tell you this, Jesse. Uh, you're a good guy. But if we get screwed over in Ukraine, the world, and let Putin get away with it, China's going into Taiwan and Iran's going to get a nuclear weapon. So one thing does lead to the other. So what would you do right now if you were sitting in the White House? You're the commander in chief. Senator Lindsey Graham looks like he's going I'd in hard any day now. House, what do you do? Our new people. Well, here, I would, I would open up Keystone production tomorrow. No, but in Europe. I would declare uh, Putin. In Europe? Uh, what would I do? I would start exporting liquefied uh, natural gas from America to Europe. I would tell the Europeans that we're going to go after Putin's assets. Let, let's do something new. The guy's the richest, one of the richest people in the world because he steals the Russian people blind. Let's take his oligarchs, all of his buddies, take their rich apartments away from them, sell their yachts, <laughs> and put them in jail for being war profiteers. You know what I would do if I were president of the United States? Yeah. I would declare Putin an international war criminal because he's evading, invading a neighboring nation that signed an agreement with Russia in 1994 to give up their nuclear stockpile, Ukraine, with a promise they wouldn't get invaded. That Putin broke that promise, and he needs to pay a price personally. I would go all in with energy independence, and I would kick our friends in the ass for not helping us in Europe. Now, that sounds pretty tough, and I, I respect that opinion. How would you cool things down, though? Because seizing apartments and making them an international war criminal, I feel like gas is going to probably hit $10 a gallon if we do something like that. How well, would you, you simmer cool things, things down, down and keep things cool stateside? Well, uh, th there's no way to disconnect us from, you know, but this whole idea that what happens in Europe doesn't matter to us. Remember World War I and World War II. It's clear to me that Putin is going after more than Ukraine. The Ukraine is a democracy. He's dismembering the democracy. He's going, he's going to take the entire country over, and China's watching what he's doing. And if Taiwan falls, that's where all the chips in the world that's are pretty point. much made. China would own Taiwan. So uh, the Iranians, I was spent three days in Israel. Israel, they're worried to death that Biden doesn't have the backbone to stop the Ayatollah who wants a nuclear bomb. He's a religious Nazi. He's not getting a bomb to protect uh, the Iranian people. He's getting a bomb to enact his religious, re religious agenda, which means to kill all the Jews and the infidels. So I don't know how to be nice about this. <laughs> I don't know how much more we have to suffer as a nation and let bad guys kick us in the ass and lose control of our own destiny here at home. So I don't know of a nice way to stop stand up to thugs. Last question real quick. If he goes after a NATO country, do we send soldiers there and bail out Estonia or Lithuania or something like that? Uh, we better because we've we made a promise to all of our NATO allies an attack on one is an attack on all. I'd like to remind you, my friend, after 9-11, Article 5 was invoked for the first time in the history of NATO on our behalf. So if you let 
Putin get away with this and China get away with it and Iran get away with it, you'll be in a third world war and you'll have a bunch of radical Islamists with nuclear weapons. That's why you need to control your border. Remember World War II. This didn't work out well then. It's not going to work out well now. I miss Donald Trump. If Donald Trump were president, none of this crap would be going on because you got to be strong. When you're weak is when everything falls apart and Biden is weak and Trump was strong. I hope we have another election soon. All right. Senator Lindsey Graham, thank you so much for joining Jesse Waters Prime Thank Time. you. Hey, Sean Hannity here. Hey, click here to subscribe to Fox News' YouTube page and catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis. You will not get it anywhere else.